A hall table goes from nice to exceptional when the artist puts on his finishing touch. At Click Divine, we build decorative, personalized furniture for both commercial and residential customers. I thought I'd use those skills to design a table for a hallway. All projects we take on use the same methodology, what we call the Divine Approach, which is comprised of four phases. Imagine, design, build, and present. The first phase, imagine, is all about idea generation and trying to visualize all the possibilities that are open to us. Structurally, every piece gets broken down into three areas, form, surface, and ornament. So let's start imagining what the form's going to look like. I really wanted to go with a demi-loom form, which is a crescent or half moon shape. And I just think that's a little bit more interesting than your typical run-of-the-mill rectangle hallway table. Then I wanted to imagine what the legs will look like. So I modeled a square leg, a turned one, and I finally liked how the fluted one looked. The next part to imagine after the form is to get an idea of the surface. And for that, I turn to Divine It, the mix and match designing tool on the Click Divine website. And so I click the Design tab to get some ideas for what the top might look like. And then there was this figured sapili, looks nice. But I ultimately settled on this figured mahogany, nice crotch of mahogany. Okay, choose the frame tab to get some wood ideas to showcase that crotch mahogany. And I started with the ebony. Nice, but I ultimately settled on the ceylon, which is a great combination with the crotch center. Now we click the border tab and see that the patterns are grouped into four collections. In the classic collection, there's this traditional double fillet. And there's also this really nice acathus leaf. Clicked on the grand collection, and there was a rococo option, and wow! That's what I'm talking about. That makes a statement. It's not called the Grand Collection for nothing. Rococo was a European style immediately after the Baroque period, with its prominence peaking around 1760. Unlike Baroque, it was completely asymmetrical, utilizing complex fretwork. Designs are full of life, featuring birds, cherubs, vines, and flowers. A single nine inch section from the top contains about 50 little pieces of exotic wood that get meticulously hand assembled. Needless to say, the Rococo pattern has a massive piece count. Okay, lock down our form and our top surface. Let's do a quick render. It'll help us imagine what it will look like in the real spot in the hallway. Not bad. At Click Divine, there are two words we don't like to hear, and they are, that's nice. We try to aim a lot higher than that's nice. We measure our success in terms of a wow factor. Looking at our current Demi Loon design, I think it falls into the that's nice category. So I give it a wow factor of say somewhere between, oh, it's like say six or seven. I think we've got to step it up quite a bit in the design phase. Okay, now that we can imagine what the table's gonna look like, it's time to finalize all the details. And for that, we use Storyline. Storylines expand a simple design into a true composition. For commercial projects, they reinforce the brand. But for residential projects, they turn furniture into heirlooms. And for our hallway project, Storylines will hopefully turn a nice table into functional art. On the Click Divine website, there's a great episode on CDTV about storylines. We've locked down the field, frame, and border top surface using the Divine It tool. So, let's head to the gallery and get some storyline ideas. Here's one. We built an end table with a Rococo border that had a gaming theme. Just needed a ten of hearts for the Royal Flush. But that didn't happen, so now the ace is broken hearted. I think we're going to use that Rococo medallion though. And inside the medallion we've done things like wine glasses and bottles of wine. But remember, Rococo is all about this passion for life. So I added a lily in the center and a cherub just over the ribbon. I think we can bump up the wow factor by a point or so. 
These highly detailed projects take time, a lot of time. So I always ask the question, is the design worthy of the effort it will take to build it? And usually, like right after that, it's like this great idea that literally falls from the sky and onto my sketchbook. And then bingo, add a hummingbird with an airbrush drop shadow so it looks like he's floating off the surface. And get this, an artist's hand putting on the finishing touch. Voila. Yep, let's add a point to the good old wow factor. The table looks kind of lonely all by itself, so I thought I'd design a matching mirror to complement it. But that simple idea almost doubles the number of wood pieces. So instead of 500 pieces, now I have a project with almost 900 pieces. I don't know, is that mirror really worth doubling the time to build it? Then it hits me. Why not show a reflection of a famous artist whose hand was actually painting that bird? You know, someone like Picasso. But then I thought, hey, what's Picasso ever done for me? And besides, he was around 200 years after the Rococo style. Not a very consistent theme. So I pointed the camera in the mirror and took a picture of the real guy who did it, me. Next, how do I get that self-portrait to show through? Well, I did a project years ago where I let a ribbon flow from the frame back to the mirror. Let's get the image out of the way. Go get some acid and burn off the silver backing. Now the real artistry starts, taking that photo and turning it into a painting of wood. I broke the picture down into sections and carefully chose which wood tones would look the best. I could take that image and glue it up to a backer board and create sort of a, an artistic sandwich, so to speak. That image takes us to just about a thousand pieces, but I like it. Accents can really solidify the final composition. We've tidied up the design of the form and the surface. Just the ornament is left. Nothing says wow like metallic leafing, the way it catches the light in a room. So I put it in the fluting of the legs and on the edge of the table. Nice. And finally, I added these gold painted Rococo onlays for the mirror frame. That should accent the flower and the bird inlay pretty well. Spraying on a full grain fill, high gloss coating, polished to a mirror finish, truly was the last and final finishing touch. Following the Divine approach, using imagining tools like Divine it, and browsing the virtual gallery on the Click Divine website has never failed to provide a stunning heirloom. I have to give finishing touch a wow factor of 10.0. Hey, Picasso, how about a little bit more green by the tail there? What do you say? <laughs>